What's up guys, welcome to another episode. We're finally going to be making some more progress on the mighty LSR31. Sorry it's been such a long gap between episodes, we've just been so incredibly busy. But I finally got the last piece of puzzle to get the front end together for this car. So I've decided to make a little bit of time to try and get the front end into this car. Uh, given the new devastating news that Archerfield Drift Park is going to be shut down by the council, uh, and the release of their last sort of couple of events in January, I've decided to try and really you know, hightail it to try and get this thing ready so that Rex and I can at least go down and maybe share this car for one of those events. Try and get one last drive in at Archie before it goes away. Uh, being that I've only ever actually gotten to driven the park myself once, Rex has never actually driven it, uh, it would be really nice to sort of get down there and, and actually drive the park before it shuts. Uh, we did want to try and get the Sylvia done for that as well, but a uh, bit of a push <laughs> to try and get both cars done in the time that we've got left before that event is going to be pretty tight. Uh, however, this car here, there's not actually too much more to go. It's really just a matter of trying to find the time. However, given the fact that I'm going to be moving out here fairly soon before Christmas, hopefully, uh, I'm hopefully going to have a fair bit more time to try and sort of get into this thing. I could do some later nights and still be home at like a decent hour sort of thing. So uh, there'll be a lot more producti productivity sort of happening and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get a bit more of this thing done. So anyway, nonetheless, we'll, uh, we'll take a quick look at the paint and see how it's actually gone now that it's dry because we haven't actually had a look since it's been dry. Honestly, I haven't really touched it until now. I've just moved it into the shed. So poor old thing's been pretty neglected. Uh, I want to try and get a few of the trims back on the car that have been painted as well, try and start getting a few things back together. Uh, and I'll show you sort of where the paint's gone bad, how it looks with all these hail dents, the colour it's sort of coming out to be. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there and try and start getting this front end together. So the bonnet here was by far the worst panel that actually got painted. Um, the whole thing is pretty bad. You can see, try and get in a good light here. It's hard to see because it's so dusty, but you can see that there, that run, um, like where there was just way too thick. The paint was too thick um, and there's heaps of flat like dry edges as well, so it's not very good. Again though, like I am pretty heavily critiquing a, a drift car, <laughs> a drift beater that was painted in equipment enamel outside in the gravel. But uh, like I said to you guys, I'm not gonna go wasting heaps of money trying to put more paint on this thing, uh, given what it is and how much paint costs. Uh, my plan is to try and just uh, 1200 this out, sort of just block it back. It should get a lot of this stuff out. The dry edge is not so much, but a lot of this run should come out with, uh, you know, blocking it back and just a good polish buff. Um, at the end of the day, it is just a track car. So you can see hail dents galore. It's pretty horrid. The roof's the same. Roof's got hail dents all over it and some dry edges as well. If you put it across there, you can see all my dry edges. So like I said, guys, I'm not, I'm not good at everything. <laughs> uh, I'm certainly no professional painter, but regardless, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out overall. You know, it's definitely black and it looks black and it's gonna be black on the side of the track, so. That's good enough for me. Uh, the guards, I found that there is a problem with this driver's side one. Um, there's not quite enough, like it doesn't actually bow out enough here and the door catches it. So I need to do, find a, a, a solution, probably pack that out from inside. I reckon if I put something uh, sort of up in here, just to pack that out so that the door doesn't catch it, I'll be dandy after that. That's all I really need to do. So I'll find something to do that with. Still quite a bit to go. Still got to paint the front bumper and everything else, but you know, it's coming along. So I'm still so stoked with how the engine bay turned out, guys. Super happy with that, so at least that's a plus. But anyway, so today's mission is going to be get my RB factory front end all in the car. The last thing that I was waiting for was my rack ends and tie rod ends, which I've ordered from Garage 7, which have now arrived. So I just ordered them the longest that I could get. Um, hopefully they're long enough and I just have to cut them down, fingers crossed. Um, but anyway, you can see all my little red hardware and these guards. It's all looking pretty good, I reckon, for a track car. I'm quite actually happy with it. Although one thing I did really want was to have my wheels sorted for when I put this front end in, just to do the front end and the guards justice. Um, so you could really get a good idea of how aggressive and, and you know well this thing's gonna sit and how it's gonna look. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Wheels is like a, one of the most expensive last sort of things that I have to get, uh, which I just, I didn't want to fork out for before Christmas, so. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have the wheels that I really want to run on the car in it at the moment. Um, which means I might have to not, I might have to wait for the brake install. Uh, I might not be able to put that on quite yet. But anyway, I thought at least make some progress while I've got a little bit of time today. Gets a video out seeing as no one's seen the car for a while. And, uh, you know, at least it's a step forward. So, we'll, uh, we'll gather out all our pieces and have a look what we got. I also want your help, guys. I want to know what you reckon we should call this car. I want to give this car a name. I want to start giving our like personal sort of projects 
sort of names, um, give them some personality sort of thing. So I don't know what to call this. I had, had it in my head to call it unsub. For anyone who watches Criminal Minds, that's what they call their unknown subject. They call it unsub. And given that the thing was just going to be murdered out, I thought unsub was pretty cool. But I feel like not enough people would probably get it or know. Probably a lot of people really confused. So if anyone's got any ideas of what we should actually name the thing, I'm keen to hear them. Get some little plates made up. So for anyone who doesn't already know or has missed some previous episodes, the plan is to be completely blacked, murdered out. It's gonna be white wheels, red wheel nuts, all these little red accents. Uh, the, the motor's completely blacked out as well. I plan on doing maybe a red tint on the windows and I would also like to do a red tint on the headlights. Now, I've been looking for VHT nightshades in red for ages and I cannot find it. So if anyone out there has or can get access to a can of VHT nightshades red, please let me know. I'd be so keen to get it off you. All right, guys, so here we have the entirety of the front end for the car all sprawled out over the floor. Now, I think I've gone through this before, but being that it's so long between episodes, I'll go through it again because I freaking forget all the time. So, most of this gear all comes from RB Factory. He does an awesome job at fully custom manufacturing parts for R31s and S and R chassis alike. Um, it's awesome gear. It's really well priced. If you're chasing anything, head to his website and have a look. If you're looking to buy anything, use the code LEPLABS for 10% off at, this, at the checkout. Um, and yeah, I, I very highly rate all of uh, RB Factory's products and I'm super stoked to have this stuff in the car. So big thanks to RB Factory. Again, he's pretty much the sole reason this car gets to go ahead. And not only that, is the knock-on effect of uh, him supplying all this gear to go into this car means that all the stuff that I had earmarked for this car was able to go into the Silvia. So even though he didn't directly supply anything for the Silvia either, he's also pretty much responsible for the Silvia being able to be built as well. So to start with, we have RB Factory's custom lower control arms. Uh, so these are very, very wide. I think they're R33 length plus uh, 50 mil or something. So massively wide. We've got his custom curved cast mounts, which give you a little bit more clearance. Uh, I believe running the wheels that I'm going to run, um, the clearance I'm going to need might be a bit up here further, but we'll find out when we chuck them on. Um, we'll know when we get there. But regardless, fully adjustable caster, which is a great thing for R31s. And those are his modified R31 caster brackets to suit S13 caster arms. So these arms also fit S13s, um, and they're awesome. So that's pretty much that sort of lower control arm area front end setup. These are the hind joints for those. Uh, we then have a set of RB Factory's custom modified knuckles, which I'll be running in this car. So super excited for how those are going to feel. Uh, we round it out with our cheap Chinese coilovers, <laughs> which uh, we've been through. Uh, not, not a permanent fixture for the car, but definitely a place for us to start. Uh, now, for the tie rod ends and rack ends, uh, I've just gone to Garage 7 and I just ordered the longest ones they offered. So Garage 7 make these in an M14, which is the S14 size, so you use an S14 uh, tie rod end. Now, these obviously are a little bit stronger than the stock S13 size, which is good, particularly when you're looking at having so much length. So. I really hope that these are long enough to do what I want to do. Um, if not, I'm going to have to be looking at maybe some GK Tech sort of setup, but uh, we'll, we'll find out. So to account for the extra track width of the front control arms, we've also got a set of RB Factory's uh, top camber plates. So these replace the ones on top of the coilover, which allow us to get a lot more adjustment out. That should be around that way. Out. So it's, you know, when you're going so big on a lower control arm, if you still mount the coilover in the stock position and don't have the extra room to go out for the uh, for the camber, you end up running way more camber than you than you need to. And uh, it makes the car feel funny. It's not the greatest thing to do. So uh, these are my front hubs. I'm just going to choose two of the best bearings. Um, that's pretty much how that's going to go. And I do have some GK Tech extended studs for these. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to bother running them or not, though. I ran them in the last car. And I just found for how often you change the front wheels, I don't really think they're that necessary. So I'll, tr I'll pick the two with the best bearings and the best studs and I'll probably just leave them for now. I'll just keep them aside. If I do find that I do want to use them, I'll grab them out and bust them out one day. Uh, and then over here, we've got my big brakes, which have been redrilled for four studs. So these came off my car the first time. I'll give them a bit of a, uh, a clean up. But um, so yeah, the big brakes for, for that. And my, I don't know if these are R33 or Z32, but you know, Big brakes, um, which is awesome. So these calipers could do with a paint, but I'm probably not gonna get time to do that today. Uh, but anyway, they're there. So four stud, big brakes, and these are my extended braided lines to account for the extra track width, obviously, as well. So extended lines to suit these calipers uh, and account for the extra track. And these are my cross member mounts, which RB Factory made up for me. Uh, I wanted some 30 mil cross member uh, spaces for just for how the LS1's gonna sit in the car. So. That rounds out the entire front end. 
and hopefully get all this in the car today. So about the last things I have to sort out is once I've actually spaced the cross member down, I just have to figure out how much I need the spacer for this intermediate steering shaft to make sure it's gonna work. And uh, yeah, there's a few other things, but let's make some freaking progress. I still need to actually do a order from GK Tech as well. I need a plate for a booster delete plate and a few other little things. Um, yeah, there's still a little bit to sort out. Uh, but we'll go through that when I get to those episodes. Otherwise, this is gonna be too long of me rambling. So let's get into it. I've already dropped the top of the coilovers all the, the coils, the struts, whatever we're going to call them, the stock R31 gear. So we'll get in underneath and uh, dismantle this. So I'll probably take this opportunity to actually get rid of these power steering lines uh, because as we know I'm going electric power steering so I won't need these lines. I'll be running new lines from the boot where the power steering pump will be. So now's as good a time as any to get them off and we'll whack in our spaces and hopefully this reaches far enough that I can still steer the thing so I can still move it around. <laughs> Space down, and yeah, I'm gonna need a extendo shafto. All right, so I put the shaft back in, I had a bit of a measure, and my plan at the moment is just going to be to buy two solid bushes of these, uh, and just extend these bolts so I could just fit two solid bushes stacked. That should get me enough to actually have full engagement on this spline, and uh, yeah, as long as that's tight with two bolts, that should be uh, long bolts, that should be fine with just a doubled up, so. That makes that fairly easy, so I'll order some of them. Whee so we're getting there. Uh, I've changed one camber top over on this side, but I've realized that I'm obviously going to have to trim up uh, the coil tower in order to actually have it so that I can have all the adjustment that's there. So I'm going to have to drop it back down and cut that out, um, but that's all right, not to worry. So yeah, it's, um, we're getting there, it's nice. I like it. All right. So I've cut the top of the coil towels. It was not a fun job and not very pretty. Just chuck some paint back over them. Um, but uh, once that paint tacks off, you're ready to uh, shove these up and continue on going with uh, the steering setup. And I'm pretty keen to get some freaking wheels on these things and see how much lock we're gonna get. Pretty excited. Pretty excited, guys. Very excited. Hmm. She's looking pretty wide. All right, guys, we've got a few problems. Uh, so, if you can see here, turn that around. Uh, you can see the angle that the lower control arm's on, where it sits. Now, I haven't obviously put wheels on and put it on the ground yet, as you can see, but uh, I've got the base height of the coilover adjusted pretty much as far out as I'm comfortable running on these cheap sort of coilovers. I'd rather not adjust that any further out. So this is just a result of obviously having my cross member space quite, quite away. Uh, so we've got this uh, sort of roll, roll center, or whatever you'd want to say. It's, it's not sitting sort of perfectly or where you'd want it to be, which is not a big deal for the control arm, but it is a big deal for the steering or the, the uh, what do you call it? Tie rod end, the tie rod. <laughs> so it is a big deal for this. Now what happens is because it's already on such an angle, when you hit a bump, um, it, it shortens the area from here to here as this travels up. So you're already over your roll center. So as it travels up, if you hit a bump or whatever and it travels up, it's gonna pull this in and it's gonna turn the wheel out on both sides. That's what we call bump steer. Uh, and it's obviously a, a pretty big issue. So um, I need some sort of roll center correction kit or roll center correction uh, for the tie rod. Not only that, but these are actually not quite long enough, um, this, this setup. So this is this, the longest ones you can buy from Garage 7 and they're still not long enough. There's, there's maybe 10 mil of, uh, of engagement on both sides, and these are actually towing out quite a bit. So they're not long enough, which is the first little bit of a pain, and obviously I need uh, some correction for, yeah, the, the roll center there. So given that these knuckles are modified, I can't just run the GK Tech roll center correction kit, which is what would uh, pretty much bring the control arm and the tie rod back to a point where they're sort of 
somewhat level and, and solve a lot of these issues. Um, that being said, I'm not actually that worried about the control arm being on that angle. That doesn't really bother me, uh, but obviously this does. So, uh, GK Tech sell high misalignment tie rod ends kits. Um, there's actually some on the 32 outside, but yeah, it's on the gravel, so I'm not going to show you. But I'm going to have to order some of them. Um, now, that pretty much knocks two, two birds with one stone because I get the extra length of their high misalignment. It comes with different lengths, uh, size sort of adapters so that you can extend this out further and uh, you can actually mount this down further so that uh, it fixes the roll center. So, anyway, hopefully those are all the right terms. I don't know, I'm very, very tired. Sorry, guys. <laughs> don't crucify me if I'm using the wrong terms, but you know what I mean. It brings the, the, the tie rod end down to the point where it's level so that you're not over your roll center so that uh, as you hit a bump and it travels up, it's not shortening so rapidly and uh, causing your wheels to turn out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to have to do. Um, ho oh, I hope that uh, when I put some wheels on this thing and put it on the ground, it's not too low. Because if it is, I've still got to adjust it, um, which is a bit of a, a pain. I really don't want to. So that's, I'll keep going, obviously, but at least these are in far enough that I can still put it on the ground and steer it and push it around. That's good. But uh, not, not enough engagement to go drifting on, really. Um, we'll end up having a, a whoopsie. It's a real pain in the ass because that high misalignment tyrodin kit from DK Tech is like 200 bucks. <laughs> Which is expensive. Anyway, you've got to do what you've got to do. It's got to be set up properly. We'll, uh, we'll put some hubs on it. I'm thinking about just putting the discs on and putting some wheels on, putting it on the ground for now. Because um, I sort of would, I would like to paint these calipers. Um, so I'm thinking about leaving them off. There's not really any real advantage to getting them on there now. Just put the hubs on, put the discs on the hubs, put the wheels on, drop it on the ground, see what it looks like. And then it's back to rolling. And that can be pretty much the end of this episode. Oh, and we'll obviously see how much lock it gets. All right, we're on the ground, kinda. We're on the hoist still, actually. Um, definitely gonna need to go probably another 15, 20 mil up. Higher, so, but that's about, like I was saying, it's about all uncomfortable, really. Extending these coilovers, but uh, yeah, with this width, even with these wheels that I've got, it completely fills the guards, so. I won't be able to go very big wheels on the front. She's, um, yeah. Pretty aggressive. So anyway, I'll jack it up. We'll try and get another sort of 15 mil out of these coilovers. See how it looks then. All right, so that's where I've ended up. That's another 15 mil. It's still sitting on the pad on the hoist and it's just too low. It's too low for what I want for this car. Now I can't get any more on the, the coilovers. So pretty much the bottom of the threaded part of the coilover is at this point level with that top bolt in the knuckle. So that's how much engagement I have of the thread into the, the base height adjuster. And I, that's as, <laughs> that's as little as I want. I don't want to, I don't want any less engagement than that. So it's annoying. I, it, I don't understand. I just, I need longer coilovers. Frustrating as hell. The thing is, even uh, like removing a spacer or this spacers wouldn't fix this issue uh, because it doesn't change the, the distance from the you know the top of the coil tower to the actual knuckle. It'd bring this up, it'd bring the cross member up and level out the control arm and everything, but it wouldn't actually fix the fact that this is just still too low and there's just not enough adjustment in the coilover. And like these wheels are not the wheels that will be staying on it, but. There's still 17s with similar sort of tire profile to what I'll be running. I might run a little bit more profile, but not much. And you got to remember, there's still no weight in the car. So we still got to put a motor and gearbox in this thing. And uh, sorry, I'll zoom the camera out so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're still got to put a motor and gearbox in this thing. And it's going to be way too low. So anyway, um, not sure where to go from here. The other option is uh, to actually make a spacer for the top and space the coil over down, which is not ideal, but it may be an option. It's definitely something we could do. Um, these actually, when uh, RB Factory sends you these adjustable caster uh, camber tops, these are actually bolts, the through bolts, they bolt from underneath. So could actually swap these out for some longer bolts even and make a, a spacer, which it looks like maybe the way I have to go. God, it's a lot of screwing around. Anyway, got to do what you got to do, but I do not plan on running this car that low. It's 
not how low I want the car. I mean, it looks freaking cool. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not building this car for aesthetics. <laughs> I'm building this car as a seat time stallion where I don't have to be worried about getting it on and off trailers, on and off the hoist, on and off the dyno. I don't have to worry about running over rocks, getting rocks to the sump. I don't have to worry about if I cop a ripple strip. Like, that's what this car's all about. It's not, it's not about uh, being aesthetically pleasing. That's, otherwise, I'd be worried about the paint. So, yeah. I'd say probably what's going to happen is a spacer plate for the top of the coil tower to space the coil over down. Um, that's what it's going to have to be. What do you do? I can't imagine any other coilover is going to be longer by that much, maybe. I, I don't know. I really thought it was just going to be throw all this stuff together and it was all going to be fine, but got more problems. More problems, more problems. Anyway, uh, we'll lift it back up a little bit and we'll see how much lock it gets. That might cheer me up a bit. All right, just off the ground. Let's see what we've got. You see what I'm talking about there? It's hitting the guard, so. Got to find a solution for that. Whoop. Yeah, fair bit of lock. There's a fair bit there. So that's hitting the lock stop on the control arm. Yep, yep, yep. So you can see that angle is just atrocious. So. Yeah, so I'd like to get it higher. It fixes all these angles, gets it higher off the ground, gives me more clearance. It just, it's just, it's got to happen. It's got to happen, and yeah, obviously still going to need high adjustment. High. <sighs> Bloody misalignment tire ends. <laughs> anyway, once this is actually aligned properly, this uh, trailing wheel will have a fair bit more lock. At the moment, it's towed out pretty bad. Um, yeah. As you can see, Plenty of clearance, it's actually following a pretty good line there as far as clearance to there. Yep, yeah, that's looking pretty good for lock. Pretty happy with that. <laughs> Not bad. I like what I see. So it does feel a little bit bindy on the steering wheel at full lock. I'm hoping the high misalignment tire ends and stuff will actually sort that out. Um, but if not, I might just have to adjust it a little bit less lock until I can sort out perhaps getting my rack relocated um, will pretty much be the next step. So, But anyway, that's going to be plenty of lock to party. It's going to be really cool. That's terrible lighting. Have to move you somewhere else. All right, guys, that's all we're gonna have time for at the moment for the R31. I've only put aside pretty much today. I've really got to get back into doing customer stuff for the rest of the week, so. Uh, it's good to get a little bit of progress done. Uh, it sucks that we ran into these walls, but at least we've run into them now uh, so that I can actually start to get the solutions underway and get the, get the ball rolling and get the parts that I need here to finish it off, so. Uh, you know, it's always good to do things sooner rather than later as far as finding these sorts of issues. It's a bit of a pain that, you, you know, uh, it doesn't all just work, but that's cars, it happens with everything. So, it is what it is. So, I'll get on to getting some stuff that I need to get to finish the front end. Uh, I've got a mate who's doing actually the, uh, the engine mount plates. So, for those of you, as you, as you guys know, I wanted to space the cross member down 30 mil and then space the engine up off the cross member about 10, 15. And the purpose of that was to make sure that I could just keep using a stock starter motor. LS starter motors can be a bit of a pain in the ass, um, you know, much like any small block Chev starter motor. So in our experience, there's something that would probably have to replace fairly often, often enough that I don't want to be using a small body, uh, you know, aftermarket starter. I want to be able to, or even a left-hand starter conversion. I really want to be able to just use a stock starter motor um, stock location. So that was the whole idea of spacing the cross member and then spacing the engine mounts up just a little bit just to try and get the stock starter motor in and it would clear the uh, the intermediate steering shaft. So that's the idea behind it all. So I've got a mate who's actually CNC or plasma cutting me up some plates to actually weld to the bottom of the engine mounts to space the engine up. So I'll probably get onto him, give him some dimensions and actually get him to try and plasma cut me some spaces to do the same thing with the uh, the coil, the, the 
coil over the top of the um, coil towers. So try and space them coil overs down. Um, maybe 20 mil would be great. So if I could space them down 20 mil and get like another five or 10 mil of engagement on the uh, on the actual base height adjustment, that would be awesome. So that would be enough and that would make me happy enough. But um, I might have to go bigger again. Like I said, we've got no weight in the car. So not that it's getting a lot more weight, but got to account for that. So anyway, it's good that this setup gives me heaps of lock. It's exactly what I wanted. It's exactly what I expected. I can't freaking wait to drive this car at this stage. I'm so excited for it. I really hope we can get to Archie and drive this car at Archie before it shuts. Um, very, very excited. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed a little bit more progress on the 31. I've enjoyed it sort of been uh, getting a bit unmotivated lately, just working my ass off doing other stuff and this has been good to actually make some progress. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Smash like, smash subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you on the next one and peace out, see you bye.